Salsa shark. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Throughout history, they have been a part of our American life. Men and women who have made it their mission to serve their fellow man. They've worked hard enough. Isn't it time? They had their own movie. Clerks. This job would be great if it wasn't for the customers. I, I don't bother them and they don't bother me. I could do without the people in the video store. Do you have that one with that guy who was in that movie that was out last year? You should hear the barrage of stupid questions I get. What do you mean there's no ice? You mean I gotta drink this coffee hot? You'd feel a hell of a lot better if you just rip into the occasional customer. <laughs> You're a clerk, paid to do a job. You can't just do anything you want while you're working. Hey, you open? No! What kind of convenience store do you run here? Miramax Films presents... You think anybody can see us down here? Why? Do you want to have sex or something? <sighs> can we? Clerks, just because they serve you, doesn't mean they like you. You hate people, but I love gatherings. Isn't it ironic? Featuring new music by Soul Asylum, Corrosion of Conformity, Bad Religion, The Jesus List, and music by Alice in Chains. <laughs> Alice. And in chains. chains. Uh, that was the most '90s low-budget movie trailer commercial I've ever heard. Oh yeah. Uh, oh wow! I didn't see this one with the with the neon zooming words at the end featuring the bands. Oh yeah. I didn't get that part. Yeah. No, I just pulled it from movie clips. Mm-hmm. So thank you, movie clips, for doing the work for us. Yeah. Thank you for putting the trailer together for us. Um, God. But welcome into that movie show. Yes. We are back at it again. Mm-hmm. There is no big studio release for in theaters to this, this week. This week, no. So we decided we're going to have a little fun, and we're going to watch an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Uh, here's the other thing, too. What I want to I want to throw this out to Kevin Smith, mm. that if Kevin Smith is watching. Bill, I don't have the number handy. Would you mind repeating it for me? Because I can never remember it. 8675309. 8675309. Fine. If you want to call Janie or us. (laughs) Yeah, or us. Um, I was going to legitimately... Is that really the number? 8675309. What was the number? What are you asking me for? The the studio number, because if Kevin Smith wants to call. uh, 508-202-1-NAI. Yeah, uh, so that'll be... What number did you give us? 8675309. It's a song. So Bill's just doing a joke. Yeah, Bill did a bit, because he wasn't (laughs) fully paying attention. Uh, I just asked for a number, and he gave the most. He's trying famous... to get Kevin Smith to call in. I, I see what you're doing. Yeah, because he liked the tweet. He did. Kevin Smith and Brian O'Halloran, who of course plays yeah. Dante in the movie, like. Yeah, the if Brian O'Halloran wants to call in too, he totally can as well. Bill, one more time with the real number. Uh, 508-2021-NAI. That's one six two four. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I doubt it. I doubt uh, it. You know, maybe. Uh, maybe. Who knows? Um. But yeah, we're gonna be do Clerks. Clerks is a very, uh, it's a very fun movie. Fun movie. I, it's one of those. Here's the thing about Clerks, and I, and I posted some something about this on the tweet last night. Um, Clerks is a movie that I, I always look when people ask what's your favorite movie. I always go with Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pulp Fiction was the movie uh, for for me. It holds a record for me nine and a half times in the theater. Okay. Um, and it was really the movie that made me really want to get into movies and entertainment and TV and all that stuff. Uh, but Clerks and Robert Rodriguez's book, Rebel Without a Crew, yes. were the two things that let me believe I actually could do it. Right. And I always forget how much like Clerks meant to me back in those right. mid-90s until I go sit down and watch. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, like the whole, like from 94 when it came out through probably 97, Clerks was in a regular rotation. Right. The other thing about Clerks as, <laughs> Clerks as well, not Clerks 2, but as well, mm-hmm. is that this made it very achievable, like when you hear the story, right? Yes. Because I didn't, I didn't watch this movie originally in theaters, uh, but I went back and watched it as a part of like my college film education. Uh, Kevin Smith is one of my favorite directors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've watched him speak several times when he came to Boston. Yep. When he came to Boston, he uh, was touring Red State, yes. and I went and I saw him uh, tour Red State, and that was awesome. Uh, then I watched, when I was living out in Los Angeles, he did a talk at the 
uh, Los Angeles Film School, mm -hmm. and I was able to like score a ticket. Nice. And so, even though I did not attend, and so I watched him speak there as well. And I just love hearing him speak. I love mm -hmm. hearing him kind of talk about movies, talk about his process. He can spin a yarn. He can spin a yarn, right? Um, you know, even more so, I've you know kind of identified with Kevin Smith because you have five podcasts because I have five <laughs> podcasts uh, I have five podcasts and want to make movies exactly um, as well you know so he he kind of has morphed into the type of entertainer that I want to be the kids call it a spirit animal the kids call it a spirit animal <laughs> uh, you know so that's you know so uh, going back and looking at his Looking at his filmography, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just kind of how how much this film has influenced me Absolutely. and kind of influenced my opinion on movie making. Because you look at this movie, <laughs> the budget was the, he just made, under twenty eight thousand. He made the movie for just under twenty eight thousand. But now, it's, it's not even twenty eight thousand because twenty eight thousand. Okay, that's a decent number, but it's. Twenty eight thousand dollars that he borrowed from his parents, and sold credit cards, sold portion of his comic book collection, and maxed out, I believe, eight, eight credit, credit cards, cards, all with like two thousand dollar limits on them. Right to make this movie, and yeah. then you watch it, and you're like, "This is achievable." Oh, absolutely. You know, it's really funny because you watch it now compared to a Clerks two mm -hmm. or one of his other films, yeah. and yeah, he's got his buddies just in the movie as extras, oh, just walking by the camera. In this, in Clerks, or are you speaking in the future movies as well? Because no, that happens too. <laughs> that does happen too. But you look at this is, you look at this movie where it's like it 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 shows you that if you have a passion for this and you have a story to tell, and you can convince a bunch of your friends to take about twenty one days off, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, that too. But if you have a will, there's a way. Absolutely. And this movie is as low budget as it gets. Yeah. But it's relatable. The performances are relatable, which is shocking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, they really are. The performances are relatable. The story's relatable. Everything's just very relatable about it, and it's its charm. And even, mm -hmm. even like his friends literally walking around the camera because it needed to look like there were more people oh, yeah. in the convenience store than there were, you know, it, it just it all pulls together very nicely. Uh, well, you can even take, for example, uh, someone like Walt Flanagan, who's, of course, on Comic Book Men now. Yeah. Uh, played, I think, five roles in the movie. Yeah. I yeah, think he he's had... the person I'm specifically thinking of. He's He's almost every customer. Yes, pretty much. Woolen cats. Woolen cats. Cap smoker. Yeah. Uh, he's the egg man. The guy. You know, the yep. guidance counselor with the eggs. Uh, he's the offended customer when yeah. they're, when they're talking about the jizz moppers. Uh, he, and he's the cat admiring bitter customer. Yeah. Uh, who of course uh, asked what the cat's name was, and one of my fucking <laughs> this this might be my favorite line in a, in a movie full of favorite lines. What's the cat's name? Annoying customer fucking asshole and just walks out <laughs> yeah, it's just right. like that bitterness is so much fun for me uh but even uh producers oh. producer scott Mosier was uh three different uh three different characters in it right you know so yeah it was like if you don't have like a real on if you're not one of the leads yeah expect you're... to do a lot of shit yeah i'm gonna have you just change hats change clothes change yep. shirts and we're just gonna we're just gonna do it again yep we're just gonna keep ro rolling them through okay right. you just you just walk through here take put take uh his jacket put that on yeah right you know so uh it's really good um i also one of my favorite things and this is a very quotable line for uh -huh. anybody uh is you're not supposed to be here today not supposed to be here today, man. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not supposed to be here today. It's it's I mean, that's one of those lines that it's weird because a movie like this that we're gonna talk about how low budget, how independent. Yeah. That line alone has become iconic. It is. And I'm not saying that that's not like jumping out on a limb here. That's it's an iconic movie right. line. Uh the also the I assure you we're open. The sign, absolutely. You know. Uh, it's always fun to see uh convenience stores with senses of humor nowadays. They either right. have something like that or or uh, they'll have the shoplifting sign out or something. Right. Um, absolutely. And the funny thing is about this movie, it's such... I mean, it's it's a movie based on writing. Yeah. It's a movie... It's a dialogue-driven movie because I watched it last night on the Blu-ray. And it's still an ugly-as-sin movie. Oh, yeah. It's grainy as fuck. Yeah. It's, it's dark at times. It's muddy. But you just sit there and laugh your ass off because it's so well written. Yeah. And this... This is also, that's a prime example of something that I talk about in the New Age Insiders a lot uh, when it relates to WWE content, mm -hmm. and that's, at the end of the day, story is king. Yeah. 
right? At the end of the day, you have to have a compelling story that's going to keep your audience engaged mm -hmm. because you look at something like uh, Tree of Life, okay, right? That um, I forget who did it, but that one of the one of those really artsy directors. All right, I'll pull it up. Hold on one second. Okay, tell you uh, the thing. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay, you look it up. But basically. That movie is beautiful, mm -hmm. but the story is nonsensical. <laughs> you know, that story is absolutely, absolutely nonsensical. Uh, Brad Pitt's in it. Okay. And uh, and, and like I said, it's... Terrence Malick. Terrence Malick, yes, right? You're right. Very artsy. <laughs> Very artsy director. Yeah. I was like, I, yeah. Tree of Life from uh, 2011. Right. It's beautiful, and it's beautifully shot, but it's not a good movie because the story's not great, or at least it's not remembered, mm -hmm. right? Because... Uh, it's just not remembered. Right. Whereas Clerks is remembered and mm -hmm. related to Absolutely. because it's the story's there. And it's amazing that still to this day, and it was something that I, I picked up on a lot of, something that uh, Brian O'Halloran kept saying in, um, it's actually on the commentary track of the first cut, because there's two versions of yeah. the film on, on the Blu-ray, which was also on um, the 10th anniversary DVD, and it's the first cut. It's the one they, they originally... Uh, Sent, sent around and brought to a couple of festivals. Uh, it's the one where, you know, spoiler alert after a 1994 movie, uh, <laughs> yeah, where Dante, Dante gets shot. Yeah, and right. And Dante dies in the end. It still has that cut and a couple other scenes yeah. that build up to it. But what he kept saying in the commentary track was uh, how he's amazed at younger people now that still come up to him and refer to him as Dante and do the, you know, you're not even supposed to be here line and stuff. And it's yeah. like, how old are you? Right. Like, and, and that to me, more than anything else, speaks to how great the writing really is because every time you, you know, that's one of the things I, I dislike about, you know, quote unquote, millennials when you try to talk to them about older movies is, I wasn't even born yet. Well, this is an old movie, okay, right. 1994, that's in black and white yeah. and not even like good black and white, no. not, not like Sin City black and white, yeah. where everything's clean and glossy. No, muddy 16 millimeter right. black and white. So it's like for them to be like, oh, it's a great movie. I mean, granted, it's kind of like the Spider-Man line. You know that really old movie, Aliens? It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, but he still likes it. I saw, yeah, okay, you right, got to pass. Right, yeah. um, so I, I find that- Shout out to Tom Holland. You can call the show anytime too, buddy. Absolutely, anytime. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I feel that's it. It just it's withstood the test of time. It is. It has. Um, yeah. I let's just kind of jump right in. Sure. And uh, just... Some of the fun specs, like we talked about, the budget was uh, twenty seven thousand five hundred and seventy five dollars. Funny, after Miramax bought it, the the post production budget was two hundred and thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And that's securing music and licensing rights and right. and Cleaning you know marketing. Up. Yeah, marketing. Marketing's marketing pretty huge. Well, that's the thing that people don't realize that when you talk about budget is just like that's rolled into it is how yeah. much marketing is. And marketing is usually it. the biggest chunk of a budget. Usually it is. Uh, unless you got like a Robert Downey Jr. getting fifty million for a movie, but you know it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, box office came back at three point two million, so they made a buck or two right. off of it. Right. And so this was also something that's very important is that this movie came along at a very important time because right around nineteen ninety four we started to break the studio system in Hollywood. Prior to this, independent filmmaking mm -hmm. wasn't a viable option. Nope. And you couldn't make movies. Just think about a time where there wasn't a YouTube, where everybody with a cell phone couldn't make a movie. You know right. what I mean? Right. And it wasn't accessible to the normal people. And so this and Pulp Fiction are kind of credited with su breaking a lot of that ground and breaking up that studio system where, no, you have to go to Hollywood. You have to be... In right. the Paramount, yeah, to exactly. Be in movies. You need to make a you know a hundred million dollar movie with a name actor and in a studio, right? So, and and I know uh, especially on today, it's not very you know, it's not the thing to say, but Miramax changed the game. Yeah, no, Miramax, plain, plain and simple. No, and, and this is and we've talked about this before in this show where you kind of have to separate Harvey Weinstein the person and Harvey Weinstein. From Miramax, the company. From play, Miramax, play, play right? They like, because, like you said, I mean, that was Clerks, Pulp Fiction. I mean, when when Pulp won at Cannes, then came back and got the Oscar nominations and stuff, and Clerks was really like same year, right? Came out the same freaking year, but they were kind of like while while Pulp was Pulp was over at Cannes, they were like the Sundance kid, right? You know what I mean? Right. So it's like Miramax had like two best forms of an independent movie while pulp is you know it's uh, higher end higher end it was still on that independent scale because it was tarantino right uh where clerks was on the well look what else we can do right and and you're right it's one of those movies that just 
you you like like I said before, I I once I watched it, I'm like, oh fuck, I can make a movie. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's not discrediting anything. It's just no, like no, no. I I wanted to make movies, and this was it, like, oh, so I don't need to do a big shoot 'em up. And and it was actually um. In one of the bonus features, Kevin Smith was talking about uh, Robert Rodriguez because he had just done El Mariachi. Yeah. And he said, because Kevin wanted to make movies and he didn't know what to make a movie about. And, right. and he went to, I, I want to say a film school in Vancouver or something like that. Something. That's where he met Mosier. Yeah. Uh, but he was like, and after, you know, hearing from Robert Rodriguez and he's like, well, I made El Mariachi because I knew I had a few things. I had a van, I had a guitar, I had a dog and a turtle. Mm -hmm. So those are definitely going to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's right. And Kevin Smith was like, oh, well, I have a convenience store and a video store and a bunch of friends. That's my movie. Right. You know, exactly. You don't need big explosions and big shoot 'em ups, even no. though El Mariachi very much was. But he worked it that way himself. Right. Uh, you know, you work to your strengths. And that was kind of where I, my head was at because I came off pulp and i'm like wow i really that'd be awesome to right. make a movie like that but fuck man i can't get john travolta right and then i see clerks i'm like oh but i can get like three of my friends together you know what right. i mean you know and we can you know we can do witty banter for yeah, 90 we're minutes a, <laughs> yeah we're a bunch of nobodies sitting around a table you know and and that's not a shot at anybody in this movie but at the time you were a bunch of nobodies no. you know what i mean and so it's like yeah we can get a bunch of nobodies together and put something together and if it's captivating and it's engaging and it's relatable and then we funny. can make a movie about it you and know if it's now it's just goddamn funny now the the difference i mean just in terms of time timing mm -hmm. uh, that that movie for me was the blair witch project okay you know just because well, i'm a little older right yeah. right just because it was like oh my god these people just brought up camera into the woods actually here's, here's an example of because you said you didn't want to you know it's not a discredit of saying the words nobodies um but of the 50 actors credited right 48 of those actors this was their first time on screen right only two of them had acting credits uh gary stern and mitch cohen which i'm not even sure which ones those guys are i'll look it up in a second <laughs> i want to say it was probably the guy that kicks the ball off the roof probably <laughs> you know what i mean like Somebody like that, and like probably like the milk person. Okay, uh, so Gary Stern or the was... ma the masturbating uh, guy in the toilet. Gary, no, Gary was the tabloid reading customer. Do you believe what they print in this shit? A man eats, you know, bear. So, you know, he yeah. was that guy, the one that uh, Randall spit water on. Oh, right. That okay. that's one of them. And Mitch, uh, Mitch, oh, Mitch played the Toxic Avenger. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> His IMDb photo is him as Toxie. Oh, good for that, him. That's pretty cool. Who'd he play in Clerks? Uh, he was... Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, he, so he was the guy leaning against the wall when Dante came out and said, don't suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. He was the one that walked away. Okay. So those two guys are the only ones who had, had actual on-screen credits before Clerks. Yeah, right. So that's just... And it's so cool that you can get so many, like you said, unknowns right. to do this. Um, right. Well, and it's so funny because I've been in those shoes before where you throw out a casting call, right? Because mm -hmm. you're like, well, I need this role and I need that role. And these were the only guys that showed up. And they're clearly... No idea. He was a Toxic Avenger. <laughs> so cool. They're clearly too old to play any of the characters. Mm -hmm. But you, they're too good of an actor to not use. Right. So it's like, hey, man, you want to be you want to be this person? Guy masturbating in a toilet. That's all you, man. <laughs> yeah, that's all you, man. Figure out some stuff. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know? And it was funny because that guy was even like doing voices and stuff like that. And, yeah. And it was, again, listening to the, uh, the commentary track, it was funny because they're sitting there like, they're listening to him do that accent. He's like, God damn, that guy was making acting choices in this movie. What's, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, God, so fun. Uh, they also have the uh, one of the most iconic conversations in movie history mm -hmm. in here, and it's the Han shot first conversation. Did they? Yes, they had that. That and or and that, I was thinking you were going to go with Empire. Empire over Jedi. Right. Well, actually, it was, it was. What do you like, Star Wars or Empire better? And he says Empire, and he said blasphemy. Now, Empire is, like, widely regarded as the best of the Star Wars right. movies. But back then, yeah. it was still, quote-unquote, a new hope. Right, yes. Uh, and then they also talk about how the uh, there were people on the Death Star that weren't, like, they were, like, contractors Contractors and, and laborers, yeah, because they were building a new Death Star, and they right. blew it up in Jedi. Yeah, yep. and so those are some of the those are some of the most uh, iconic conversations. Exactly, because they end up getting referenced and talked about. Because this might have been the first time that that like sort of nerdy culture was kind of like that comic book culture was kind of represented on film. Yeah, 
you know so that's pretty that's... especially again in in the way that they were doing it it wasn't just throwaway shit it's like that was a big scene in the movie right. you know what it's I mean? a big conversation and when there's not you know things blowing up behind you in cgi you got to have these really compelling conversations that people right. are going to want to listen to over and over again right uh so it's very fun this movie takes a lot of weird twists and turns oh yeah you know what i mean like the whole movie and it's i also do have to make uh, i do have to have a confession right okay. uh i saw clerks 2 first wow i saw How? i clerks 2 came out in theaters and i had seen it before i was able to get my hands on clerks 1 when did clerk jesus christ when did clerks 2 come out uh clerks 2 came out in uh we'll take a look at that and cuz that's cuz clerks 2 is after 2006 Okay, now did you see the others? The mall rats, Dogma, yeah, yes, Chasing Amy, yes. Jay so, and Bob Sutt, Drake Back. So I had so the order of the order of Kevin Smith movies that I have seen uh, are Dogma. I saw Dogma first. Okay. Then Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Mm -hmm. Then Chasing Amy. Mm -hmm. Then Clerks Two. Then Clerks. Never saw Mall Rats. Uh, no, I've seen Mall Rats. When did I see Mall Rats? Maybe Mallrats was after Clerks. Mallrats was squeezed in there somewhere. Maybe well, I think Mallrats was after Clerks. And do we count in, in this because the, you know in the view askew universe, if you will, do we count Zach and Mary? Um, because it's not yeah. really, but it's a Kevin Smith movie. Yeah, that and, and like Jay hangs dong in it. Yeah, and, <laughs> right, and that one where uh, Bruce Willis is a cop. Cop out. Cop out. Like I've, yeah, but that those were obviously after Clerks. Yes. Um, but yeah, leading up to clerks, that was wow, that was the a order. weird order to go in. Uh, really, a really weird order to go really in. Weird order. Yeah. Um, I have never actually watched the TV series though. I never saw the it. animated one. Yeah, I never watched it. I I have those on uh, DVD actually. Yeah, is it good? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it it wasn't. Again, if it, it felt like one of those things that was a little ahead oh. of its time. Also, do we count Goodwill Hunting? No. no. <laughs> We don't. Okay. Fine. Not not as part of. I mean, yeah, he was involved, but he was we've a, all seen it. He was a producer. We've done a show on it. You can go back to the archives. <laughs> That's right. You know, newageinsiders dot com and check that out. That's true. That's um, true. but yeah, he was a producer and basically got it made. So yeah, yeah. we can kind of count it. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. But yeah, it it was the animated series felt kind of ahead of its time. Where, um, let me see when exactly it came out. Two thousand one. Two, yeah. So, we were on the back end of. <sighs> The public consumption of edgy humor. Right. You know, um, because through the 90s, it was all about that shit. I mean, you, you know, you guys on the show, the Attitude Era, people listening right, know yeah. about the Attitude Era. It was very much like that in all. It wasn't just yeah, WWF no. going crazy. It was everything. Everything. Shock jocks on radio. Every South radio Park. DJ was a, was a shock jock. South Park came out in the late 90s. Uh, so the late 90s were very open to whatever. We used a lot of words and phrases that we can't use today. Right. We, you know, I can't even use those to describe the words we were saying back then. You yeah, know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, and it was just the time. Yeah. And I feel that around 2000, 2001, people were starting to calm down a bit on that. Right. And it was almost like downshifting on, on the edginess. And it ran, it on, it ran on ABC. It was Y2K? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was uh, running on a ABC. Um there was, I want to say, a pimp character or a drug dealer or something. Jay and Bob weren't really drug dealers as much in that. So they changed a couple of things to try, try to tone it down, but it was still a bit too much. I think people would right. just... It was one of those weird things where the diehard fans of Clerks and Kevin Smith, it wasn't Kevin Smith enough. Yeah. And for the casual fan, it was just a bit too much for a cartoon on ABC. Yeah. Okay. If it had run on Comedy Central or MTV or one of those others, it would have been, been fine and maybe gotten a second season. Uh, but they cut it even before all the Six episodes. Six episodes. Right? Six episodes. Uh, the DVD, I believe, has 12 or 13 uh, on there. Yeah. Um, however, if since we're on spinoffs and adaptations, uh, another in 1995, just a year later, yep. when he was filming Mallrats, uh, there was a... How do we say it? A Saved by the Bell esque sitcom based on Clerks. Okay. Only a pilot. Uh, playing Randall Graves, who of course was Jeff Anderson in the movie, was a pre SNL Jim Brewer. Okay. Uh, also, pre Felicity Carrie Russell was in it. 
and it was awful. You can find it on YouTube, and I'll oh, tweet it out after the I'm, show. I'm going to have to watch this. I've never seen it. It's just the pilot. It's 22 minutes long. And yeah. I was actually thinking as we were starting, because I just uh, reshared our watch along with the Star Wars I holiday. I saw that. This might have to be the second one. Okay. It's 22 minutes. We can do that yeah, at, we'll, you know, we'll bang in it a up. heartbeat. Uh, but, uh, I'm also pretty sure that I now uh, work around the corner from your house. Do you really? Yeah, I think so. We'll oh, talk about it later. Fine, cool. That'll make that stuff even easier because um, we don't have to wait Bill up. Yeah. <laughs> Are you awake over there? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Bill, have you seen Clerks? <clears throat> nope. God damn it. Do you want to see Clerks? Sure. You know, I have Clerks 2 on DVD. Some of this stuff- Do I have to see the second one before the first one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But however, I did realize because it, on the DVD, uh, if, if uh, 10th anniversary DVD or the Blu-ray, whatever, whichever one- um, there's laser disc. Laser, I, uh, I'll get to laser disc in a minute because it is kind of pertinent to all this. Um, there is a deleted scene that they, it was basically the, what happened inside the funeral. Yes. And they animated it in the style of Clerks, an, the Clerks animated TV show. Oh, that's hilarious. And in it, there's a lot of mall rats and chasing Amy's characters in there. Yeah. Uh, including Joey Lauren Adams' character. Okay. Uh, who gets referenced by Randall as finger cuffs. <laughs> and it's just it's a weird and you also realize that now I, I understand that well, even watching clerks alone there's a lot of timeline fuck ups yeah um but and they even reference that a lot in commentaries and stuff because they were like how did he get fined for the cigarettes selling them at four but it was before hockey but hockey was at two that's yeah, and he's right. just like yeah i, I fucked up you know <laughs> but in this one it reveals that mall rats is actually the day before clerks Okay. Takes place because the the girl that dies, the funeral that they're at, yeah. is the girl who saw T. S. Quint at the mall, and he said something about her fat ass or something like, or the camera adds ten pounds, and you know how how fat, and they actually animated her to have an extra fat ass. That's so funny. So she went and started doing laps until an aneurysm popped in her head and she died, but that was the day before. Okay. So okay. Technically, Mall Rats is a prequel. That's so fun. Technically, well, it's and it's all it's kind of like that. Uh, it's kind of like that Godfather two. Yes, where it's like it's a sequel but a prequel. Sequel but a prequel. Um, yeah. Or it, Temple of Doom also. Temple, yeah, little known prequel. Well, yeah, people don't realize that Temple of Doom is because nobody looks at that little that little time at the beginning of the movie right. where it has a little text and it's like whatever year it is. Right, and, and like, it's way earlier than yeah. Uh, Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Fun facts for you here. It's a learning show. It is a learning show. So we're going to dive into this movie or what? I mean, eventually. Eventually. I mean, this is the thing. This movie, uh, there's... It, the movie just exists. <laughs> yeah, it just exists. It's a day in the life of it. It's not, you know... Yeah, so it's not like there's just like scene after scene. There's like different moments in this that I think we're going to hit on, but it's yeah. just more or less just like... It's just this dude's day. Yeah. After being called in, and it's super shitty. One thing that I also want to talk to talk about is, uh, great job, Kevin Smith, of doing the same opening for Clerks Two that you did in Clerks. Okay. It's black and white. Yep. And the whole the whole thing mm -hmm. is the same, and then all of a sudden, it's not until. He opens it and everything's on fire. Yep. <laughs> then, then it becomes That's in color. right. Holy shit. Then it becomes in color. And he lifts the shutters and the fire is in color. Yeah, he has trouble Damn, lifting. I actually forgot that happened. Yeah, he has trouble lifting it and then finally gets it and the entire thing's on fire. I left the coffee maker on. You left the coffee maker on. Because <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? Terrorists? <laughs> no! You left the coffee maker on. Uh, so yeah, so we start with Dante uh, rolling out of the closet. How he was sleeping like that, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he falls out of the closet, uh, gets woken up to getting called by his boss into work. Yep. After just closing the night before. Right. Uh, and uh, we get a shot of a dog's asshole. Which yeah. For is, is what it is. Edgy 90s. It is, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I feel again, like that's an Allison Chains thing. Well, uh, I actually, you know, again, going back to the Robert Rodriguez thing, I feel he's taking a note from him because on Mariachi, uh, Robert Rodriguez has shitload of sync problems. The, aud yeah. the audio just wasn't syncing up well. So every time he had a phrase on set, and every time he had a sync problem, he would cut to the dog. Yeah. There was a lot of cuts to dogs and cats and clerks. Yeah. And after hearing that Kevin Smith had heard from Robert Rodriguez and talked about all this other stuff, I'm like, you know, I bet that's a lift right from there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of B roll. Yeah. There's a lot of like cutaways and stuff in this. A lot of not matching cutaways. <laughs> yeah. A lot of not matching cutaways. Continuity, schmontinuity. Yeah. Who cares? But again, this is your first movie, man. And, yeah. And there's, 
this just also goes to the adage of like, just do it. Yeah. You'll get better at it. Seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at this show. This uh, show was a nightmare in the beginning. Yeah. We but then we hired up. Bill. <laughs> 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 then we hired Bill. We just kind of guilted him into it. Still paid. On, on both shows. <laughs> the New Age Insiders one. I shanghaied him into this one. He didn't even want to do pop. And now... <laughs> and now look at now him. Now look at him. Now look at him. I sent him a pictograph of all the shows we do. I don't know what that is. Uh, like a picture, but it's just like a bunch of pictures. It's one of the, the things that the kids do these days. Yeah, on the like Instagram. A pictograph. Uh, yeah, that is another word. A collage. A collage. <laughs> like, Fine. Like my Nana would say, you know, make a collage. Yeah. Yes. With Nana. paper mache. Yeah. Yeah. A paper mache collage. Get, get, get your glue stick out. Right. We're making some internet. <laughs> <laughs> Make some internet. Uh, uh, so <laughs> the movie he gets to he gets to the the convenience store. Yes, he does. And someone jammed gum in the locks. Yeah, and so he can't get the door open. So we have bunch the bunch of I savages. Assure you, we're open. Which he which again an, uh, a joke that runs through the movie. He has to make the sign. He gets a sheet out of the trunk of his car and has right. to make it with shoe polish. Right. So for the rest of the movie, everyone keeps asking him why he smells like shoe polish. Right. And so very fun. We meet Randall. Who's very very fun character in this movie? Well, that's the funny thing. It's kind of a buddy movie, but the buddy doesn't show up for about fifteen twenty minutes because we right. go through the whole uh, Chuli's gum and the cigarettes, yep. and uh, we're, we're introduced to his girlfriend Veronica, yep. who shows up and fire extinguishes everybody. Yeah, you know, and right. they're pelting him with cigarettes. Dante's yeah. had a morning. Oh yeah, he's not and, having and, a and good his day. buddy who's supposed to open the goddamn video store. We get the video store guy. Yep, that's who, right. Who's pissed off? He can't rent. He's like, don't don't hurt yourself, pal. I'll go to Big Choice. Yeah, right. As a video store guy, that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, so Dante's had a morning all before Randall strolls in at like the crack of noon. <laughs> yeah, right. Before it happens. And so then he, uh, they have the conversation about Star Wars. Yes. Uh, we find out that his boss had gone to Vermont, and that's why he's not there. His ex-girlfriend's marrying an Asian design major. Yeah, we found out his girlfriend's getting married. He's the only one that didn't know about it, even though he's been talking to her on the phone this whole time. Right. Find out there's a little bit of a love story there, kind of like, a, you know, yeah. he wants to get back together, but he's also with Veronica. And, and so there's this love triangle. Caitlin, and everybody's behind everybody's back. And is yeah. Randall gay? I mean, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> right. Uh, there's a guy that takes a, there's a guy that goes into the bathroom with a porno mag and then dies. After warning us about the hazards of fluorescence light bulbs yeah right you know they give cancer sunny boy <laughs> cool cool <laughs> thanks I'm really glad we did that oh my god uh we meet jay and silent bob oh yeah they're drug dealers the local out in drug front. dealers yeah they're out in front uh my favorite thing has to be the uh the jay i mean not the jay the silent bob words of wisdom Okay, uh, at the end. At the end. At the end. Uh, there's, a, there's a million girls in the world do, but most of them just fucking cheat on you. They don't bring you lasagna at, at work. Yeah. That was uh, uh, f that was trivia for you. That was supposed to be Jay's line. He just couldn't get it out. That's And so they were doing fun. so many takes, and Kevin was just getting annoyed and annoyed. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. You just tell him to go fuck himself and leave. And all of a sudden, because again, I was watching right. it this morning with the commentary track, and, and he's explaining this. And then Jay starts walking out, and he goes, I told you to say two words. And all of a sudden, there's this litany of obscenity coming out of your mouth. This, I, again, certain words we can't say in 2018, right. but the other F word, uh, cock smoker, was thrown out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that was – Jay was supposed to originally be the prophet, if you will. The, that's so funny. And that became his kind of his gimmick. Yeah, that's his gimmick throughout all of these because they make fun of it in Dogma yeah. where he goes – you know what? You're supposed to say something important, and you come out with fucking a. <laughs> Dude says nothing all fucking day. All of a sudden, he says two words. Everybody thinks it's goddamn magic. Where were you with that Amy shit? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, so it's so funny. They end up go. So they start playing hockey on the roof. There's just a lot of nonsense that happens. Shenanigans. But yeah, and and it's just funny because this. If, is the, if, I mean, if you worked minimum wage, you, you've you've had these jobs where right. it's just like I don't really I, give a fuck. I don't care. What are you gonna do? Fire me, and right. I have to go work at another convenience store. Got to go find a job at movies. Apparently, <laughs> right? A job at movies. Oh God, movies. Uh, but. Yeah, it, they end up going to the, the funeral because they find that one of his girlfriends had died. Yep, an ex-girlfriend. Yep. Well, which is so funny because how did you not know she died? Slash, how did you only find out that the wake was today? Well, again, the timeline is a little 
odd because technically she only died yesterday. They really rushed the shit out of that wake. Right. She might have been Jewish. Maybe. Is that a thing? Yeah, if you're Jewish, they got to have the wake like the next day. Okay, maybe. I'm pretty I'm like pretty sure that that's the rule. That could be it. So, we can look it up or the commenters can can roast me for not knowing the Jewish faith. Are you Jewish? No. Don't hassle it. Look at this beard. Does this beard make me look Jewish? I don't know. Yeah, you don't How know. How do I answer that question? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oy vey. Possibly. Possibly. You know, I don't, no judgment. No. <laughs> I do um. not know. Uh, so, yeah, they go to the, the, the wake and knock a casket over. Her fucking body <laughs> falls out. Yeah. Uh, all of which can be seen in animated form on the special features of the Blu-ray <laughs> if you go out and buy it. Uh, which is rather hilarious because it also involves them trying to get down this. Uh, the body was actually dressed in a tube top and and like spandex pants and okay. car keys go down the pants. So and Dante, who was the ex girlfriend, and the only time he actually met the parents was they walked in on him going down on her. So now he's actually reaching into her pants trying to get the keys right and get caught again. Okay, and then the casket falls over. Yeah. Her body comes out. They gotta run. The revelers go chasing <laughs> after them. Dante does a sweet Starsky and Hutch over his car, <laughs> oh, very fun. which uh, in a lot of the special features, Brian O'Halloran would like to say, I, I improvise that. Yeah. Stunts. 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 <laughs> stunts. We've got them. In in this uh, $27,000 movie, did you get stunt pay for that? <laughs> yeah, you get, yeah. Did you get stunt pay? What about hazard pay? Look, I'm not paying you stunt pay. I got film to develop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I have real film that I'm going to have to go into a, have to send away to get developed. Yes. I'm going to literally have to get the t- the the film glue to cut and glue this <laughs> together. They actually they edited this all in the video store. Uh, oh, Kev- fuck. Cuz uh, yeah, cuz Kevin was working. Yeah, I knew that he worked there. He was working at the Quick Stop and the RST Video and him and Scott Mosier mm-hmm. basically slept in the video store and edited throughout the night. Yeah. So they set up their their editing bay there and they cut the movie, which uh, again, very uh very low fi Very low budget. Yeah. Uh, but it's great. So then we end up getting, we get it back to the co- the quick stop, and the love triangle kind of comes to a head because have we played hockey on the roof with the shoe polish smell motherfucker? Yeah, I think the uh, <laughs> why, I, why are you gonna skimp on free fucking Gatorade? You shoe polish smell. <laughs> that guy I loved. Yeah, I fucking loved that guy. Um, and I, I was looking for Ed. Uh, oh, okay, Ed Hapsack was was the actor. Uh, he was he, he also again because everybody plays multiple roles. Yep. The when they came running out of the funeral home, driving away the three mourners that were there, he was the woman. That's so. He funny. pulled his ponytail out and he played the woman. That's so funny. Uh, so yeah, and uh, the shoe polish smelling motherfucker was a fanta- another fantastic yeah. line. Right, and they're kicking the ball off the. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, the the only real special effect in Clerks was. Because the the guy who was yelling at them, the angry customer right. who smacks the ball off the roof, was Scott Mosier. Yeah, but he also played Willem, who was uh, the snowball. Yeah. So in that scene, there's bearded Scott Mosier on the ground asking if they're open, and then clean shaved Scott Mosier yells down at him. Oh, trick yeah. photography. Yeah, trick. high budget. We got we got Ooh. the same guy talking to himself in this movie, man. Ooh, green screen? Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> How's that weather? It's green. <laughs> yeah, it's green. I don't. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I, we we didn't even get in, into the whole. The, there was a snowball scene. Yeah, with uh, with Willem, who I love his credit as Willem the idiot man child. Yeah, Willem's role actually is the one that gets taken over by uh, Ethan Sopley in uh, Mallrats. He's the guy oh. looking at the 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 sailboat. Okay, that's Willem. Uh, uh, okay. But in this one, it was Scott Mosier, and we realize that uh, Veronica, Dante's girlfriend, right, uh, just. Used to blow him, I guess. They yeah. didn't really date. Uh, and originally in the script, Willem was supposed to be a collegiate type <laughs> that would match the story a bit okay. more. But they couldn't. It, the actor d- that was going to do it didn't want to be associated with that kind of context, I guess, is one of the stories I heard. So they just said, Mosier, do it. Okay. And it, he doesn't look collegiate. Right. So he just kind of became a drug addled idiot. Yeah, right. So it's very odd when she's like, Yeah, I blew him. Right. I'm like, what? So he explains oh, the whole snowballing thing, and that gets into the 37 Dick speech, um, yeah. which, funnily enough, uh, again, like I said in, in my tweet last night, holds a lot more personal meaning to me because uh, when I went to, I was going to North Shore Community College, and I had an acting class in there, and one of the things was, you know, make a scene. You got a scene partner okay, and yep. do a scene. Yep. And me and this girl did the 37 Dick's scene that's so funny uh and it's always been something every acting class i've taken when i've gotten an assignment like this 
it, I always find it odd that the class just assumes you have to keep everything PG. Yeah, no. And I'm just like, I wasn't doing this for shock value. I wasn't doing. I was doing it because I like this scene. There was a we. Our workshop was two people. Right. We needed to do a scene, and I couldn't have one of us just playing the dog, for lack of a better term. So we needed a conversational scene. I'm like, well, Jesus. Let's do it. The whole movie is a conversation. Right. So just So we you know, we pushed apart the desks and we leaned up against the thing and she you know, she sat down in between my legs and I started, you know, miming painting her nails because that's what they were yeah. doing. And we ran through the whole fucking thing. And it was hilarious. Of don't mind telling you. Uh, of course. But yeah, it was funny because once we, we did it a couple times, uh, one of the students comes up to me and goes, Wow, man, it was really ballsy to do that. I go, Why? He said, dick sucking like 47 times so funny. i'm like 37 thank you uh <laughs> and i'm like you could have done that if you wanted to but that's always right. kind of like even uh in another acting class like i picked they wanted to do, us to do a monologue i picked uh drexel the pimp from true romance that whole speech about yeah. you know just sit down and have an egg roll and they look at these big titties on the thing and all that because i'm like gary oldman fucking rock that shit yeah, and right. again long sustained monologue you can yep. do it yeah, uh, and I got to throw myself over the table in that one, so that was pretty very fun. fun. Yeah, very very I, fun. I had a I had a uh, Edward Norton esque fight with myself from Fight Club. Very fun, where I got to beat myself up in the scene. Very fun. Um, so yes, yeah, so we have the thirty seven dicks. We got the snowballs. We got yeah. um, just a litany of problems for Dante. Right. Every everything that can go wrong has gone wrong, <laughs> pretty much, uh, including losing your hockey ball. Right, you lost your hockey ball. So in that process, he decides that he wants to go on a date with Caitlin. Yes. Because she reveals that it was like this arranged engagement or something. Very strange. Very strange. And she shows up out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah. And so, you know, that is what it is. <laughs> but he decides that he wants to go on. But of course she had to. Right, she had to because we needed some sort of conflict in this movie. Yeah. And so we get the conflict because he's decided to do it uh jay and silent bob end up coming in and basically hitting him with the truth right yeah. because dante <laughs> dante's whole dante's whole issue in this movie is, is well, she feels like, a dead guy well there's that well i was gonna get there i was gonna get there but the reason they draw bigger titties in that one <laughs> yeah he um his whole thing is is that he doesn't like the direction of his life and he, does, he doesn't feel like he's in control, which, you know, when you're watching it as a young filmmaker in your, you know, 20s, mm. uh, it is exactly how you feel. Yeah. It's how you feel about everything. And it's really funny because that's that's probably the most relatable thing in this movie when you're in your, your early 20s, yeah. you know, right out of high school, like 18 to 22, 23. They explored it a bit uh, also in Chasing Amy with the banky character not being happy with your station in life. Right. and Very similar. And, and so, then again, Dante in Clerks 2. Yeah, he's stuck in a rut, and he doesn't know how to change, and, and he doesn't know what he's doing, and he's just kind of floating. Yep. <laughs> yeah, then we find out that Caitlin had sex with a dead guy. Well, yes, the guy who came in earlier to, and, masturbate, in to the, masturbate in the bathroom and warn us about fluorescent lights yep. goes to the bathroom, does masturbate, Yep. dies. Yep, and they just leave him there. And, well, nobody knew. Yeah, because Dante left to get changed. Randall didn't know he was in there. Right. Caitlin shows up for their date. And, and asked to go to use the bathroom. Right. And she thinks it's Dante. Well, Randall explains because, well, the lights don't work. And she's like, why? Well, the electrician owes money to the video store. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm torn in the middle with my, you know, my loyalty to the video store or my need to piss with the lights on. Right. So she goes in the back with the lights out and Dante shows up and Randall's sitting at the front watching his hermaphroditic porn. Yep. And and he's like oh where's Caitlin? She's like, oh, and she comes walking out like right at, you know on cue right yeah and she's like how did you get out here so fast and he's like i've been gone for an hour yeah and she all of a sudden there's this weird conversation where you don't really know what she's talking about right and finally it's revealed where she just goes well then who did i fuck back there yeah and he'll just go and he he looks around and he goes i was sitting here yeah Who's back there? And then it's you know, call the police. Yeah. Why? Because somebody just raped Caitlin and Randall's <laughs> right there for the response. She said she did all the work. Yeah. Fantastic. Very, very funny. So they take the, away the man's body. 
Uh, that's where we find the Jay and Silent Bob and Silent Bob hitting the prophetic. Truth bomb. Uh, you know there's a million fine-looking women in the world, but, dude, they're not going to bring you. <laughs> she's gonna One's going to bring you lasagna, and the rest are going to cheat on you. Most of them are just going to cheat on you, yeah. Right, and so it's like, wow, he realizes he loves Veronica just in time for Randall to fuck it all yep. up. To, to take his stand as the best friend and say, well, he just doesn't love you anymore. He loves yeah. Caitlin. Right, and not in his place. And so that end, they end up having a huge fight. Veronica breaks up with them, storms out. As you do. As, as you do. <laughs> that ensues one of the best bit between these two, the fight between Randall and Dante. The Yeah, the candy fight between the two of them where they're just throwing everything at each other. Yeah, they're just fighting at everybody there, you know. And then, you know, of course, Randall comes in with, you know, some more truth bombs of his own. And, you know, hey, it's not so bad and, you know, everything's okay. And, you know, if you're so smart, how come you're still here? You know what I mean? And and that's just. Which, again, is very much echoed in, in the sequel because right. they are still in that rut. Right. And meanwhile, Dante keeps talking. Because it, it is, it's one of those things where you can kind of feel for Randall in that respect because Dante does try to talk down to him a lot. Right. Where it's like, no, no, I'm better than this. It's like, you're really not. Yeah, you're, you're not. You're in the same spot as me. You're not even going to school. Yeah, it's not right. like you're trying to get out of this. Yeah, you're just you're just existing. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And so he leaves, and the last thing you hear is is the uh, the you're closed. Yeah, um, fun fun little bit. Uh, Randall, his uh, he was he did a little you know a little dance, a little wiggle. They 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 said why don't you wrangle for me? Right uh, now. This was even before my time. I I didn't know about the Wrangler Gene commercial. I've since looked it up on YouTube. You can find it. Okay. Uh, but originally, uh, Randall was going to do a little soft shoe dance out the door. But on his one day off, on the twenty one day shoot, yeah, he Kevin asked him, uh, "What are you going to do with your your one day off?" And he goes, "Well, I'm going to strap on my Wranglers and I'm going to have a party." And he just kind of did the dance out the door. He goes, "Fuck the soft shoe. That's what we're doing, and we're going to do it to the right. Wrangler Jeans commercial." Well, when Miramax bought it. They secured, you know, rights here or right. there. It was the only thing that they couldn't secure was from Wrangler Jeans, and I didn't even know they still existed. That's so funny. Uh, so they had to redub it as Randall, he's a berserker, as opposed to he's a Wrangler and that whole thing. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he throws the, uh, I sure you were open sign at him, yells were closed. Yeah. Theatrically, that's where we roll credits. Right, that is where we roll credits at Theatrically. Theatrically. Because, <laughs> uh, like I said, originally, the first cut of the film... Somebody comes in and... We, we get a, a long handheld of feet yeah. weaving around the, the convenience store, and right. then it pans up to Dante, and he think, he's you hear him talking as the camera's panning around, right. thinking it's Randall, what did you forget? And he looks up and sees, he goes, oh, I'm sorry, we're closed. <laughs> now... There was even a version that went to Sundance where that's where the movie ended. Oh, okay. But the original cut was the guy pulls a gun. And shoots him. Shoots him. Cold blood. Yeah, no reason. Robs the register. Right. And we end the movie. We fade to black on Dante's dead body laying in a pile of cigarettes on the ground. Yeah. Behind the register. Prolifically on a down ending. Yeah. Much like Empire. Much like Empire. The movie they all loved. Yeah, right, right, right. It ties in. It ties in very it really, well. It really ties the movie together on a it real really, down note. It really does. But uh, but yeah, I believe that was one of those, one of the few notes that was given to them. Like, yeah, we got to get rid of that. Yeah. Um, and funny thing was, there was another deleted scene in the original cut where Randall was disabling the security cameras. Yeah. So he could fuck around. Now, right. it didn't make the final cut. But even in that cut, you're like, oh, and that guy would never would have got a, he would have got yeah, away with it, right? He would have because there's no way to find out who it was because Randall got rid of the security right. cameras. <laughs> right. So now, yeah, okay, great. You you didn't lock the door on your way out. You got your best friend killed. He's not even supposed to be right. here, and we can't figure out who did it because you cut the goddamn camera. Yeah, right. Great. You're great. Um, yeah. So that's Clerks. That it is. That it is. Uh, they went on. To be connected to Mallrats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back before returning for Clerks 2 yeah. uh, in 2006. And there's been a lot of will they, won't they with uh, a possibility it's, of Clerks 3. It's officially dead. That's what I've heard. That as was, of now, that because was Randall one. doesn't want to do it. Jeff Anderson doesn't want to come back as, uh, as Dante. Yeah. Uh, which, it's sad, but okay. 
It is what it is. Well, the other I'm, th- I'm happy with the movies we got. I'm not like I'm not going to cry over a movie that's not going to get made because I'm happy with Clerks. I'm happy with Clerks too. Well, the other thing too, and and this goes to something. The first one was in 2006. Or, I mean, the second one was in 2006. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, another almost 10 years later. What, 12 years removed? 12 years removed, yeah. yeah. We're going to get another one? Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Mm. I have a personal, like, I don't think that that should be something we do, where it's like, go between that long between sequels. Especially with something like this, because it almost, at this point, yeah, men of their age right. still running a register is getting sad. Right, it, right. Well, I'm sure it would be a very well, funny was... movie. Somewhere in the back of your head, you're like, God. The fuck? Well, and and then, but even still, the second one ends on such a an upper. Yeah. Right? Because the whole thing is, is that now you're getting into your 30s. Well, they, yeah, they ended up buying the quick stop. They didn't bought they? the quick stop. So yeah, it's like, so Dawson. it's the tail end of this of like, well, no, you're an adult now. To go be an adult. It was a, it was a nice ending. And the they story. end up buying the place. It comes full circle and, and, we're done. The yeah. story's over. Yeah. You know, the only other way that this Clerks 3 would happen is if it was, if it was like somebody else. Right. You know what I mean? It's not these two. It's what, what is Clerk, Clerks, like one, what well, is actually, their story? Oh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Jay and Bob bought the store. Right. They're just allowing them to run it. Yeah. So that the two of them have a place to stand. And sell drugs. That's, that's their only caveat is you can never kick us out of here. Right. That's right. Um, is that, yeah, because they had all the, the Miramax money. Because they did it because they sold Jay and Silent Bob. Bob. Yep. Yeah. So you're right. <laughs> you're right. Fuck. But but still, it's like Clerks 3, if it's going to be a made, it, it, like it's not going to be a made movie. But if it was, I would say you go completely different and tell a Clerks 1 story in 2018. Like, what yeah. is what does that look like now? Because 1994 is very different from 2018. Seriously, man. You know, and, and it offers a bunch of different challenges. Um, yeah, and it's it's funny because the time the time difference is so huge. Um, last last night when when I was watching this, it did remind me. Um, my buddy went to Merrimack College, and he was taking Bill. He, Bill, yeah, you went to Merrimack as well. No, I worked there. Well, I knew you worked there. I didn't <clears throat> there as well. No, he, um, he does his voice announcings. Mm-hmm. And he was taking the the film and television production class, and I was his actor. Oh, very fun. Uh, and it's almost like I got like a free education from Merrimack. Uh, yeah. yeah, from Merrimack, because I was just there all the time with them. Uh, fun story that has Charlie Day from Always Sunny connected to it too, and. Uh, one of the things we did was we I was running the Hollywood video. I was actually working at the Hollywood video. I didn't even start running it at this time. I was just a literally a clerk. Yeah. Uh, and we basically did our version of Clerks, where it was me just kind of doing a mockumentary style thing. Uh, but because of the way he was editing it, it was all it was basically me setting up punchlines that he would then intercut with shots from the movie. Right. That sort of thing. I guess that was the project. I don't really remember. But sure. Nevertheless. While watching this, and I'm sitting like, I bet I still have that tape somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, went to the attic, dug it up, found the tape. Very fun. Was able to figure out how to hook my VCR, VCR kids, Google it, uh, into my computer and actually go back and watch it. And I would, and it's one of those weird things because it's funny as hell because I'm like 16 years old. Right. <sighs> and I would love to be like, just for nostalgia's sake, just kind of pop that on YouTube or something. But it was a different time Ooh. with a lot of different language. Yeah. Uh, but you, it, know, you know what we could do? We could just censor that. But that that's not how I roll, man. Yeah, fair enough. That's not how I roll. But, <laughs> but what it actually reminded me of was how much, like I said earlier, how much this movie meant. Because like all of our camera tests that we would do at Merrimack was basically me and somebody else. And one of them was actually Charlie Day from Always Sunny right. doing lines from Clerks. Right. Like Lou, would yeah. ju- Lou would just set up the camera yeah. and he'd start you know, doing camera tests and it's just us doing so there, somewhere I, I don't know if he's st- I don't have this tape but I don't know if Lou still has it or not uh, but somewhere there is a tape that can never be aired because of the language in it but it's me and Charlie Day yeah. doing the Jay and Silent Bob bit where he's just Bob standing there and I'm sitting there doing the uh, the I'll fuck this bitch and I'll fuck that bitch and I'll yeah. fuck anything that moves that whole scene that's so remember funny it so vividly 
um, because he was in the class with Lou. That's so and funny. He it was he helped out film on one of our final projects where we were doing where I say our but I want to lose final projects. <laughs> uh, so there's a weird connection. And like years and years later, Always Sunny hits the air and I start seeing promos and I'm like, that looks fucking familiar. Yeah. And I I send Lou a text. I go, Hey, you remember that guy? <laughs> that, that helped on a couple of our videos. He goes, "Oh, you saw the Sunny promo." So I'm like, "Yeah, that's him." I'm like, right. "Fuck! That, why the fuck didn't you keep his number?" <laughs> you know. What I mean? you... Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was just it was always a present movie in the in those years in my life. Right. Uh, even so, and going back, so I come full circle on a laser disc thing. Um, <laughs> so basically, I had a laser disc collection, and it came as about you as you do, and. Um, I'm still to this day a very big proponent of uh, physical media. If you follow me on social media, you've seen a few of my movie collections. Yeah, um, but <laughs> you have multiple collections. I have collections. It's yeah. not one collection. It's multiple. No, no, you know, it can't have be one just one solitary collection. You got multiple, multiple collections. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I remember because I was working. I just started at the video store, and there was a guy, and he started explaining to me. Uh, the benefits of Laserdisc. Now, mind you, this was 96, 97. DVDs weren't right. a thing. Right. And being a huge movie fan that I was, at the time, I had a VHS co- VHS collection that spanned my mother's entire basement. Oh, jeez. Um, and uh, so he's like, oh, wait, have you ever checked out Laserdiscs? I go, no, I haven't. And he starts explaining to me. He's like, "Oh well, you know how you watch it. You're watching a movie, and it's like, you know, it's you know, movie screens are rectangles, and our TVs are squares." And he started explaining pan scan versus widescreen and letterbox <laughs> right, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And I'm like, "Oh shit, you're right." And he and he starts explaining commentary tracks to me and bonus features, deleted scenes, right? All this stuff that up until that point, which we take for granted yeah, now, didn't didn't exist on just VHS, right? You didn't have to exist. Buy. You didn't even get the trailer to the movie you were watching. You get fifteen other fucking trailers for other right. movies that you didn't want to see, but it, they right. just didn't exist. So a couple weeks later, I took one of my paychecks, went down to one of the you know the indie video stores. Yeah, they had a used a Suncoast li- video. No, come on now, that's corporate as you get there, oh. sir. Oh, sorry. Um, Excuse me. No, no. It was like some mom and pop, like uh, probably. I think, oh, God, I want to say Laser Exchange, maybe. <laughs> Amazing. Sounds um, like a sounds like a wax place. But they literally they were a laser disc store. Yeah. And I I bought a used. They're laser... still not around, I assume. No, no, they are not. Um, but they uh, but there is actually one, and there's a place in Connecticut called the Archive. That, oh, cool. that sells like it sells comics, music, vinyl, and they have a bunch of laser discs as yeah. well. Um, like Amoeba. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I got you. And uh, so I bought a used player, and I bought uh, Clerks on Laserdisc and Scream on oh, cool. Laserdisc. And fun, Scream. Yep, fun fact about Scream, and there was a reason behind it. Uh, to this day, that Laserdisc version of Scream is still the only uncut version of Scream. Oh, cool. Uh, the rest of them are all the theatrical R-rated cuts. That's the only place that actually had the unrated cut. I have no idea why. Interesting. Um, Interesting. But Clerks had, you know, the alternate ending, the deleted scenes, yeah, it had, it had the commentary track, and it was just so so cool. Yeah. Such an expensive addiction to have because laser discs were about the cheap ones. You can get a used one for about thirty bucks. Yeah. But most movies were in the forty to fifty dollar range. Uh, I was talking about it last night while I was watching the movie, and the uh, my Pulp Fiction Criterion Collection laser disc um, was, I believe, eighty five dollars. Oh, jeez! And it's one movie. Yeah. On four discs, and much like records, you had to you flip, flip them. the disc. Yeah, right. Um, depending on you know the size the size That's of the amazing. disc, it's like every thirty minutes you'd have to flip the disc. Right. Um, which, yeah, it was one of those things that when uh, when DVDs came around, those of us laser just people were like, ah, it's a fad. It's not going to last. And then all of a sudden we tried one. It's like, oh, fuck. We need to start selling our laser this so <laughs> yeah. quick. Right. But on the original DVD commentary of Clerks, they ported over the Laserdisc one. Okay. So you hear him talking about on this Laserdisc, on this Laserdisc. That's so funny. Then Chasing Amy came around. Right. And Criterion put it out on Laserdisc because they Criterion still wasn't doing DVD. Right. Kevin Smith was a big Laserdisc guy. Okay. So on, now if you own the Criterion Collection DVD 
of Chasing Amy, he actually has an apology before the intros because they poured it over from the laser disc onto <laughs> that, where he destroys DVD. He's That's... like, fuck DVD, it's a fucking fad. Laser disc is where it so there's a new intro. That's He's like so funny. I'm sorry. It's almost like the Facebook commercial you right. see on TV now. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you I'm know? sorry. So um yeah. The last thing I want to say about Kevin Smith is uh whenever I get a, a chance, uh Mr. Kevin Smith. Please come on the show. No, nah, I, I would love to interview you. I would love to pick your brain about podcasting mm-hmm. and filmmaking in general. Uh, you actually are one of my favorite. You actually are one of my favorite directors. And if I was to ever have a chance to be your personal assistant, I would take that job. Wow, look at you. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. We're going to do it because I really like Kevin Smith. There you go. <laughs> so there we go. So that is Clerks uh, from 1994, the first Kevin Smith movie of, I'm guessing, many we're going to do here on the uh, show. Probably all of them. <laughs> and coming up next week right here on That Movie Show, we're going to do, uh, it's the first time we're doing this. It's kind of a compare and contrast. Yeah. Ocean's Eleven right. from 1960 correct, with the Rat Pack, Yep, Sinatra, Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. versus Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. What year was it out? I want to say 2001? With, yeah. Uh, with, <laughs> with Clooney, Pitt, Damon. Yeah. All of uh, them. Yeah, all of them. The, the 11 of them. And so- Two, 2001. That's, oh, in honor, that's in honor of the upcoming Ocean's 8. Ocean's 8. So, coming out in theaters. Yeah, coming out in theaters, and I don't know if they're related. I I don't know. I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm gonna see it. I don't know if I'm gonna, I have movie pass. I know. So I I, might. I, ha- I have free movie cards, and I'm so. just like, I think this one might might wait till Netflix maybe or, or maybe. whatever it hits maybe. You know what? We'll see how we feel after the compare and contrast for the Ocean's Eleven. We will. So so tune into that. There you go. Next week, Ocean's Eleven versus Ocean's Eleven, right here on That Movie Show. I am Mike Went, Liam Stryker, Bill Neville behind the board. Don't forget to subscribe to New Age Pop, NewAgeInsiders.com, all across your favorite podcasting apps, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.